So um, we're going to film this project because this is a, another little interesting one. This particular woman is a congenital um, elbow disarticulation. She actually has a little bit of her elbow joint. Uh, she's 55, 60 years old, has been wearing an um, uh, above elbow prosthesis for uh, her whole life. And she just wants a replacement. She's wearing a harness right now, so we're going to do this with suction and a suspension. Uh, but to keep it really light, uh, we're going to make the elbow joints and um, the forearm part. So what we did here, of course, the first thing we did was make a silicone polyethylene inner socket, which will be her socket at the end. Uh, this one is about an eighth inch thick. So then we molded, then we took this off the model and molded a low density polyethylene inner as a dummy that this will fit into later. Now once we had this molded, we fashioned out the surfaces for the elbow joint. If you want to maybe look from this side, Phil, so you can see the angle of these joints. All right, so of course you got your 40 degrees internal rotation so that the hand will reach her mouth. And what we do is just make these flat surfaces, which will be the joint surfaces. And the joints will be just copolymer lap joints. And in this case, I think what we're going to do is notch out this, to keep it low profile, we have the room to notch out in here and have the forearm part of the joint on the inside of this. So that'll be about the size of her elbow, which is nice and small. She also wants a glove, a cosmetic glove that goes over past the elbow so that she has a more cosmetic advantage to this thing. So now we're going to make a copolymer frame over this. Um, when that's created, we'll take an impression of this to make the bottom section for the forearm. And of course, uh, it's passive. The whole arm is passive. She's been told by all her family members that she needs, uh, they, that she should get, uh, you know, a Utah arm and, uh, you know, an independently functioning fingers type hand system. And she's smart. She realizes that after all these years of using a prosthesis, she's not going to retrain herself to use it for other things other than its cosmetic advantage. So this is strictly a cosmetic arm with a fa passive hand. Free motion elbow joint, no lock, and that's what she likes. <clears throat> but what's nice about this is by using the suction, we're going to avoid the harness. And she's always had a problem with the harnesses with these things, as all upper extremity amputees do. Eventually, they just nag on your neck and uh, everything else. So I'm going to mold this first and pull the frame off, make the lower section, and hopefully she'll be happy. this with a seam. Uh, see the joint surfaces are laid out. And even though there's a seam, that seam will be polished out at the end. You won't see it. Are we going to rotate this or what? Well, you're there. Come on. Come on. Sorry. Come on. And always rotate it so that the weight of that seam is reinforcing it rather than pulling away. I'd like to have a decent pair of scissors one of these days. That's why we have a rotating station here. Okay. Now you can see the joint surfaces. And this joint will just be simply a copper rivet riveting the copolymer frame to the copolymer forearm section. Very lightly and durable enough for her, since she doesn't use this arm for anything other than cosmetics. Okay. 
How close are you? Yes, I am. Get out of my way. It's like a little dog. Tasteless. Tasteless. <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm just going to see if I can get more salt. Can you see when you tie it up? You see the little thing over there? You see it loose enough? You see this little meter over there? Oh, yeah, the little one. Yeah, so even if you don't feel it, but when you tie it, look at when you tie it up. Go all the way down. So many ago by the trail over here, but that's enough over here. Okay, then we polish it, I said. Alright. Alright, what I forgot to mention also is uh, we also placed a, a piece of one inch adhesive velcro in here, which will become the channel for her suspension. We will uh, just take a gel liner, a cushion liner, and glue a velcro strap to it up around here and then have an exit hole here and have the strap come inside the frame. That's why we need this channel. The strap will fix after the loop will go back over and that'll be her suspension. And it'll, of course we placed on the inside of the arm so no one sees it. socket and the interesting thing was since now she'll be wearing a liner with an attachment through the socket we were able to actually trim the socket which started as an AE or transhumeral actually elbow disarticulation um, congenital way up over the shoulder that's where it started you see the joint surfaces by the time we got done with the fitting this is what the socket became <laughs> Halfway up the humerus, she actually wore it like this with the liner because the liner going through was able to lock her into the socket and held, held good suspension. We were able to even trim the liner down to about two thirds the length of the humerus. Um, but the problem with it, because this was trimmed this way, is because of the leverage necessary to hold up the forearm and the hand, there was this kind of motion. So we convinced her to use the inner socket as just a soft inner socket that will be trimmed, maybe just even a band up in here. And that will be attached to the outer frame. You can see the points where it will be riveted. Okay, so the next step, now we have our joint services. <clears throat> she was very comfortable in here with the thing looser because remember, we took the inner socket out and left that whole space kind of loose on her, which is good because she actually has an elbow, jam, elbow joint. Congenital. So she's got a little bony fragment with a hinge that she likes to move. And by having her inside the socket, she felt restricted and wasn't able to move the existing elbow that she had, which she likes. So by leaving it open, she's much more comfortable having that little range inside the socket. Now I'm going to trim this out to make a 1 8 inch channel that will accept the radial section of this prosthesis inside this surface because we have a lot of room to work with. So rather than have the joints on the outside, the left joint will be actually inserted on the inside. That'll be channeled out. So if we're going to do it that way, we need to go back and measure the distance on this model because remember that socket was made over this model and we have to reduce it by a full quarter inch because now we're measuring the outside of this unit. The material is eighth inch and we have to reduce this by a quarter to get that space small enough so that the joints will fit inside. Now, then, this was created with a narrower dimension. Okay, you can see the joint surfaces here and here. It was created with a narrower dimension. So now, this will be just 
a section of the, of the uh, radial piece that blends into a pylon that puts the hand on. And over here, this will be the tab that attaches to the elbow joints, fitting inside the socket. So we're going to mold another piece of 1 inch, 1 8 inch gold pylon around of that, and the joint will just be a lap joint riveted together with a copper rivet and a Teflon bushing board, allowing free motion with a hyperextension stop and uh, no no other function of the arm whatsoever because that's really what she wants. Thank you. Okay, so now um, the arm is ready for fitting. Okay, so the way this was built, we actually took an image of the inner socket, modified it so we can make a tab having the hinge point underneath the humeral section. Okay, and that right now is just put it together with a speedy rivet. When we're finished, we'll put it together with a copper rivet and a Teflon bushing. And then this was fashioned in plaster on a mandrel, so that gives us our pylon length to get to the hand. So the whole arm now, we got full range of motion. That's full extension. Right now we can get it to about 90 degrees of flexion. If we want to get more, we'll trim a little bit more out of the anterior side here. And she's coming into a fitting to determine where we want the rotation on the hand. The hand was just bolted onto, this is a passive hand uh, that matches her shape. It was just bolted onto a nylon bar. That's, I don't know if you can see this. We just notched it up a few places so that it will bond to the copolymer pylon. And then we'll fit this in here, glue it together, maybe screw it, put a foam cover on it and skin. But she's going to come in now to fit this and make sure our length is right and our rotation is where she wants it. It's obviously a passive hand, not going to do anything but look nice. And the whole hand weighs not even a pound, 14 ounces. In fact, the hand is the heaviest part of the prosthesis. We may even cut some of this nylon down to reduce the weight even more. But she'll wear this with just a liner have a tab coming, strap coming through here, hooking onto the Velcro on the inside, and that's it, no more shoulder harness. And this was fashioned out, depend, determined by how, how she wanted it, basically. She actually wanted it with no, no uh, soft inner up on top, but it was just too flimsy on her. We couldn't get control. So we left the inner and trimmed it down to a band, approximately, and attached it to the copolymer, so it gives us some control on the humerus. <coughs> and that's it, she's ready for a fit. So, in the interim, we also just took a polyethylene cone, wrapped it from the uh, elbow to the wrist, when the wrist was in place, and poured that up the foam to make a forearm. And now we're going to fit her. Before we finish out the forearm, we want to fit her, make sure we have the right length and angle of the hand, and uh, we'll see how things go. Right. Okay, so there was a slight miscalculation on the length on the forearm length. I think that's because Francesco took the measurements. Right, honey? It's even good that it's shorter because now it's going to be a little fat, fatter. And she's a little bit fatter than what she is in the end, so it's good. He's trying to learn to speak English, but things will be alright. So what we did was just slice this. I mean, you slice it with Thank a blade. You. Okay? Unscrew it. Now remember that nylon rod was in the center of the pylon and it had been foamed in when they foamed up the forearm. So now the nylon rod is one is connected Yes. To the copolymer too with foam, okay? Yeah. So we just measure off inch and a half. I'm going to cut this right in half at this point. Hopefully, we'll cut it straight. Hey, you. Why you put it on and take it off right away? I'll show She leave the, the hand on. Give me a marker. Right here. 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 We want to cut that inch and a half exactly around that forearm so that it doesn't angulate, leaving us with a gap between the hand and the forearm, right? So you take your inch and a half mark, go around with it, and there's a guide for where we want to cut it. Not that crazy. Put this one. Now, what we'll do to make sure you cut it. I don't know if it's a foam. That leaks. 
I'll leave. Hold it. Hold my hand. Ooh, so nice. Now, we're going to look, look at the blade so we make sure we're cutting it on the right angle, okay? And keep rotating that until you see it in the right place on the blade. Happens to be right there. Lovely. So we know what angle we want to cut this at. The nylon rod is integrated into the pylon. You can see now the flesh colored pylon, which is part of this forearm section. The nylon rod in the center. Just clean out a little bit of the threads here. You can do that part. Can I just fly it up a little bit with, that, with the machine? No, 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 no. You just clean it. You just fly it up a little bit. Hold the angle. Okay? Yeah, yeah, just right. a See what happened. The bolt came to the end mm -hmm. at the thread inside that rod. Now the whole rod is spinning inside, mm -hmm. which is okay. Before you put the skin on, we'll put a couple of screws in. Yeah, but the, so now we're going to try it. Yeah. Someone might shape it up a little bit, or you want to just put it? Yeah, get it together. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? The whole thing come off. You the see? Thing come off. You see out there? The rod come out, thing inside. Oh, because the rod slid forward. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's okay. That's so right. We'll fill this in. Okay. okay. Now. Yes, sir. And then we'll just put one stainless steel screw in there to hold it all together. This is going to get buried in the foam. That's okay. Don't want to lose it. Now you don't see it because the foam covers it. And, and you know where the hole is when you pull the glove off. Right here, guys, you want to take it off? This is the hole, sir. You see, sir? Okay, okay. now, let me take it off this thing so yeah. I can... This thing so I can... Blow it up the... Oh, oh. Blow it up, blow it up the glove. Oh. So now he's going to pop the speedy, speedy rivets. With a nice, quiet... That's the tongue action when he works. That's the tongue. The lips, okay. the lips. There's the tongue. You see, if I took out, I pull out my tongue, I fix it well. What see? You see? <laughs> see? You broke it. Oh, 
Oh, what a beautiful job. Now no, you want to no, position this way. Okay. That's right. So the label's in front. So how should I put this way? So yeah, aim it so see the label here? Mm -hmm. That's the front. Mm hmm So you don't want to be like this. You don't want to be like this. You want to keep this in line so with your own. That, that line in the side should match up the little finger she's got on the side, right? This, uh, that's a good idea. That might just be perfect. That might be just be She's got a built in reference. If it works, it's beautiful. And you're right, the nail doesn't have a little white nail bed, you know? Yeah. Oh, but it does look much better on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's got the shape. Okay, can we like, okay, the arm, I don't want to like that. Can we do something with the hand? Is it the shape? Yeah, yeah, you can do it any way you want. Okay. You can do that yourself. Okay. You can make the, okay. You know, whatever is natural. Oh well, yeah, it does look much yeah. better. It looks much better. Well, sure, when it's all in a hand, you know, instead of a floppy glove. So now, the next step. You see how this is, Pat? So now mm -hmm. that's just a Velcro strip, adhesive Velcro, little channel in the bottom of the socket. So what she'll do is, we'll see. We cut that down so it's not as long anymore, mm -hmm. remember? No, but I was finding, as I was working, that if I just sort of stretch it out a little yeah, bit, you know it feels... Yeah, you know what? Because it, it shouldn't be doing this on your skin. It shouldn't be pulling mm -hmm. on the and skin. And it was at yeah, some point yeah, it yeah. does, so... So if, the secret is not to pull on it, but the secret is to roll it up smooth. Because if you do this, if you do this, watch, and hang, it's, then it pulls on the skin. So mm. if you just do it simple like this, when you roll it up, nice and easy, push against it. One clean shot this way. You don't feel the tension on the skin. Okay. Alright. That's right. This is okay. This is what's right. gonna take a little bit of time to yeah. once you get okay. get it right. Get the hang of yeah. okay, there you go. Okay. Well, you gotta try it, honey. Yeah, she's but wait got, a she's, got, I, she's, I got, she's got it. She's got it. Uh -huh. So now rotate it as you go in. That's it. Now you see this strap? The strap mm -hmm. in? That's got to line up with that. So as you go in, you see the two pins of Velcro? You see the two, see these, yeah. up, these two mm -hmm. pins here? They got to line up. So now you pull right in. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. And as you're pushing down the elbow, that's right, right. Now you got it. Perfect. Okay. Now it's flopping over. Well, we left it long. See, uh, yeah, it's, just look, stay normal. Stay up. Is it all the way in? Mm hmm. Okay, put your other arm down. I'm doing it before like this. This is not all right. Look at, no, you know this, Pat? You know this? The line is okay. Just stand straight, don't look at it. Don't touch 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 it. Don't touch
fucking picky until you live with it for a little while. And if you start thinking of seeing the same thing all the time and notice the same thing all the time, then you know we have to adjust it. Because your body needs to adjust it with one that's half the weight of the other one, with no shoulder strap, it's kind of dangling from the arm now instead of from the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different changes here. Yeah. Cool. Live. Live. I will. I'm much better too. <laughs> Live. I, I'm just, it just feels so weird. It feels weird. It's like, wait a minute. I don't really have an arm on, do I? That's exactly what it is. It's like, I don't feel like I have anything on that. I know. It's like, it's not right. But it, it only, she's, for 40 years, her life has been carrying this thing, and now it's carrying nothing. Get the camera going. Enjoy. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Thank Merry Christmas. You. Oh, it's great. It's great. Thank you. No more shoulder harness. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. With the shoulder harness, you don't tell me. Exactly. 55. So for the first time, she's got so an arm that's five years old. a third of the weight she had before. No more shoulder harness. I'm, I'm, all, I'm always doing one of these. It's like a cross strap. It's showing. It's showing. Yeah, times 10. Now, yeah, it's actually where no rashes or anything. No pulling of your fabric. Or, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was really one of the workarounds that they made. The last one they were buckled. Actually, my son contacted someone. I live up in the Bronx. Oh, that's a part. No, no, no. So my 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 son was. He said, "Mom, look at this. Look at this." I, I got a package and, and I called them up and all you gotta do is uh, call up for an appointment. So we did that. You know, and, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm really happy. Oh my goodness, what is this? It's like, what is this? Yes, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Thank you.